May where we celebrate Mental Health Awareness Month. And uh, throughout the month of May, uh, we're going to be promoting Wild Wellness Wednesdays. Uh, each week, we're going to have this fitness session and we're going to introduce a speaker who will focus on one aspect of how we can maintain our uh, holistic health. And today, I am so thrilled to ha have friends and colleagues, Hedia Fakriazdi, uh, who is the director of our social responsibility efforts here in the U.S. and the foundation. And we all also have Rob Powell, who leads our social responsibility work in the London office. So they're going to be sharing with you uh, how the firm has responded over these past weeks and how we will continue to respond um, in, in the weeks and months to follow, um, as well as share some ideas for how we can get our alumni engaged and involved. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Hedia, then Rob, we will have, they will give a brief report and at around 12.15, uh, we'll turn it over to uh, Gregory, uh, who will lead us in our session. Okay, uh, Hedia, take it away. First of all, I really wanna thank you and your team for, for offering this amazing programming and for recognizing the importance of Mental Health Awareness Month. So, so thank you guys for making this uh, possible for everyone. Um, as Tito mentioned, I'm Hedia Fakhriazdi. I lead the firm's corporate social responsibility and wild foundation efforts, primarily in the U.S. and to some extent um, in some of our international offices. And you'll hear from my colleague Rob as well, who, who works in this space as well and does some tremendous work in a moment. Um, I wanted to share with you all a little bit about how the firm has been responding to the 501c3 community, the nonprofits that we support uh, across the globe. And in particular, I think, I think we are all aware that some of the most critical social services, including mental health services, medical services, emergency relief services, in particular in the United States, to a lesser degree in the international context, are provided by the incredible nonprofit organizations that our firm helps to support and so many others that we wish we could support, but we just simply don't have the bandwidth to support. So I think it's really important to remember that in the midst of this uh, very scary um, pandemic, that there are hundreds and millions of people around the world that are in, the, are in need of critical services that are no that are not served, that are not provided to them, but anyone else other than the nonprofit community. And so something that has been really important to my team and as well to Rob Powell and our colleagues in the pro bono department has been to reach out to these nonprofit organizations um, the moment the pandemic really broke and to understand what their needs are, what are their priority areas. And, and we call this basically doing a needs assessment to really understand in the wake of this crisis, how can we help support them um, as partners? And what we see after any natural disaster, um, and it's, it's no different now in the wake of a major public health disaster, is that the flow of funds to these organizations is the most critical in the first instance. So part of what we have been doing is to um, adjust the firm's charitable giving strategy to the 501c3 community and to ensure that in the instances where nonprofits around the globe are facing major funding um, shortfalls, whether it be through loss of revenue because of the thousands of nonprofit galas and fundraisers that are now um, being cut short because of government funding that is no longer able to flow as steadily to these organizations, many, many uh, cash flow challenges, funders and individual donors who might be losing their jobs who are now not in a position to fulfill um, their philanthropic gifts. Um, it, it really is our responsibility to help step in and to help fill that gap where we can. And thankfully, we are so blessed that Weil is in a strong position where we can help to do that. So what we're happy to report is that as a part of that charitable giving strategy, 
uh, we rolled out a very sizable uh, contribution to about eight healthcare systems across the United States to help support infectious disease research, research related to contact tracing, related to COVID, COVID testing, as well as funding that is going to help get uh, protective uh, equipment and other medical supplies into the hands of, of frontline supporters. So, so those contributions have been rolled out and will be continued to rolled out over the weeks and months ahead, as well as a sizable gift to the UN Foundation Solidarity Relief Fund that goes to help support the work of the World Health Organization. So in the first instance, we're thrilled that the firm's foundation and the generosity of the foundation was able to make that happen. Um, we have also been to the extent that we can fulfilling other charitable uh, obligations that we would otherwise make to nonprofits later in the year, but trying to get that money out to those organizations now so that we can help again with loss of revenue and cash flow challenges where we can. And what I would offer to those of you that work in large institutions that are in a position to be a funder to nonprofits around the world is to consider the extent to which you can provide advances to this charitable funding today as opposed to waiting later in the year um, or kind of waiting for that funding cycle to come up. Um, from an engagement perspective, and this is something that we would love to offer to, to our alums, is um, finding opportunities to retrofit existing programs that we would otherwise have with the nonprofit community that used to take place in person and now hosting them via Zoom and through various online platforms. To date, we've hosted um, two very successful mock interviewing and resume review sessions with New York City high school students. And of course, New York City is the largest public school system in the country and is facing some of the biggest challenges around getting technology into the hands of children who are now being homeschooled. So our ability to help ensure that these kids are not facing a major disruption in terms of their schooling and the access that they would normally have to amazing corporate volunteers like, like those of you on the call um, is something that the firm has been working hard around. And it is a, a tremendous, talking about our mental health, it is a wonderful way to ensure that we uh, do not feel as isolated, but that, that these young students also do not feel that sense of isolation and they feel as though they have somebody on the other end of the computer screen who can help support them through a very, very scary and disruptive time in their lives. So um, what, what I will say is that, you know, the firm's charitable giving efforts and employee engagement efforts, there, there are too many for me to name in the short period of time that I have to, to speak with you all, but it is an ongoing situation. The needs of the nonprofit community and the needs of all of us as, as a human society right now are constantly changing on an hourly and on a, on a daily basis. Um, but we, we would welcome any of you who would like to join us in these efforts. And if there is any way that our team can help support you all, whether it be you are trying to consider what organization is reputable for you to personally make a charitable contribution, what organization might you want to give of your time as a volunteer and, and serve with? And, and I'll say there's a lot of remote opportunities right now, but there are also opportunities if you are in a city or region where it's safe for you to go outdoors and to volunteer with an essential nonprofit, such as a food bank, you are desperately needed. So these are opportunities that we um, know a lot about and that we are more than willing to work with you or your companies that you represent to help identify ways in which you all can, can get involved and to help serve the nonprofit community. The last thing that I'll share in the spirit of mental but also physical health is that our New York office on an annual basis um, participates in the American Heart Association's Run Walk, uh, Wall Street Run Walk every year um, in May. This year, the Run Walk was canceled. It is moving to a virtual Run Walk that everyone can participate in from their home if you're able to leave your home and, and run or walk in, in the natural environment. Um, and we're extending this opportunity to anyone in any region who would like to join us. So um, we'll make sure that we get information to you about this virtual wellness event um, over the next couple of days. And, and we would love to see as many of you participate that would like to. So, so with that, I'd love to hand it over to my amazing colleague, Rob, to share more about our efforts in the London office. Thank you very much, Adia. And uh, good afternoon, everyone from London. Uh, I hope you're all safe and well. 
So I'll just give you an overview of the work that we're doing in London in respect of COVID-19. Um, so like us, our pro bono clients and not-for-profit partners have had to adjust to this new landscape and are having to kind of reshape and redesign the services they deliver in line with government public health advice. And we're very mindful of the fact that they often have very limited resources. Um, so we're providing them with the support and guidance they need that works for them. And so our COVID-19 strategy um, is kind of changing by the day because this whole situation, there's new developments every single day. But at this stage, it can be broken down into kind of five distinct areas. I'll list the areas now and then I'll give you a couple of examples of what we're doing in each of those areas. So number one is contractual. Number two is investment. Number three is practical. Number four is community. And number five is financial. So contractual. So we're providing a lot of pro bono advice to charities and social enterprises that have existing contractual commitments, which, and they're now facing issues because of COVID-19. That might be events cancelled or fundraising initiatives cancelled. Um, and so we've advised a whole spectrum of charities like St. John's Ambulance, the Royal Academy of Arts, Young Citizens, Save the Children, Action Against Hunger. So we're getting a lot of these requests coming through. Um, investment, the second strand. So in the UK, charities have generally been kind of left out of any of the UK government's financial schemes. And so we're actually working on a pretty huge matter so our banking team are advising an organization called social investment business um, who are running a 100 million pound emergency um, loan fund for charities and social enterprises to access capital so we've got a large team of lawyers who are acting on that matter um, and are helping with kind of deal execution all of the documentation and generally just kind of running um, the scheme. And so that is open to any charity across England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. And it's a major, fairly high profile piece of pro bono work. Um, and then on the practical side. So this is where we try and help small businesses or entrepreneurs or small charities deal with some of the, the practical challenges of navigating COVID-19. So just this morning, we held our second Zoom clinic um, for entrepreneurs and small businesses. And um, so this is where we have businesses who have various COVID-19 issues and challenges. They send them through to us in advance. And then we have a group of lawyers and business professionals who answer them in a live forum on Zoom. Um, so we've held two of those so far. Uh, we've had 30 businesses attend. And they're really fantastic and quite impactful. And, and later this month, we've got a further three Zoom clinics um, for small charities and social enterprises. Um, a, another example in the practical um, strand is, and again, this is a pretty big major matter, but we're actually working with one of our longstanding pro bono clients who operates across pretty much all of um, Africa and works with SMEs to um, help them grow their business, but they also do a lot of work with governments across Africa. So we're actually advising the government of Malawi to digitalize their entire school curriculum so their children can continue their learning during lockdown. And that's, a, again, a major piece of work um, which, is, which is ongoing. Uh, moving on to strand number four, which is community. So we've developed something in the London office called Wild Work From Home Connect, which is a, a menu of remote volunteering opportunities that employees can take part in from the comfort of their own home. And um, so some examples are a befriending service um, with um, people who are homeless uh, with a charity called Glassdoor Homeless Shelter, um, a befriending service for cancer patients with Macmillan Cancer Support. Um, and that's a really structured 12 week program um, and so there's a whole range of initiatives within that where people can volunteer working with young people of various vulnerable groups via Zoom or kind of telephone calls. And then finally, financial. So 
you know, charities and social enterprises need nothing more than just pure hard cash at this at this moment in time. And you know, the donation which Hedia referenced earlier from the firm is incredible. It's an incredible commitment from the firm. But in London, we're doing something bespoke for our charities that we work with locally. And we've recently um, just ran an appeal in a London office where we've asked employees to donate the equivalent um, money they would spend commuting into the office um, and also their daily spend on food and coffees. Um, and then the partners are going to match that. And then the London office is going to match that again um, from the charity budget. And so we should have details of that um, next week and we will distribute that to our key strategic charity partners. Um, so that's it. That's kind of what that's a high level overview of what we're doing. We're always open to collaborating with clients, alumni and um, other organisations. So, you know, if, if you're based in London um, and you want to get involved, please contact um, Keto and he'll be sure to put me in touch with you. Um, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.